And we are live. I know he'll be looking at us like, what the, what is he, oh, what is he doing? Sharing the show, of course, as we do every Sunday. Um, damn. I don't remember what this is in the format. It's not familiar. I don't know. Bullshit. I don't know what I'm doing over there. I'll just give it a second. You was looking at me this morning at Starbucks? What? You said Starbucks? Mm hmm. I don't do Starbucks. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> Just to do that? <laughs> I'm like, damn! That shit took me 18 minutes! What up, kickbackers? We gotta talk about Jesse Smollett, uh, Kelly. Uh, Meek's birthday. We got a lot to discuss mm -hmm. on this fine day. Yeah. Um, um, let me see. Uh, 50 how you been? Barack Obama. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> how was your birthday? It was great. It really was. You know, nothing went wrong. Everything just flowed. Normally, it's. Well, hold on, before you tell your birthday story, let me start the podcast. So okay. we're, we're, we're start. Oh, we're, we're, we're. All right, so before we do the introduction, while I'm still sharing the show and all this other great shit, um, JB and me, you guys were talking about your birthday <laughs> and how you enjoy it. So go ahead and, and pick up where you left off before I interrupt you. I just wanted to make sure that our listeners on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play and Christian Mingle didn't miss how your birthday was. <laughs> so me, how was your birthday? My birthday was great, everybody. Like I was telling them, it was just for once everything just flowed. Like everything went the way I wanted to go. It wasn't no irritation, no aggravation, no ignorant mess. You know, I heard from my auntie. Well, I, it started off, my homegirl, Mimi, came over that night I got off work. And she was like, I'm coming over, bitch. We about to start mm -hmm. your birthday. What you drinking? I was like, girl, you know I drink Hennessy. <laughs> so she was like, all right, I'm coming. So I was like, all right. I was like, damn, I was all comfortable in the bed. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to chill. <laughs> 
She called Buck a good dog, gave me turned up. <laughs> so, you know, it was a good night. That was a good way to start my birthday. That's what's up. Heard from my aunt from Virginia. I haven't heard from... She ain't called me on my birthday in a while. She'll normally text mm-hmm. me. But mm-hmm. she called me on her way to work. Okay. And then my son, Nurse. She used to be... She was the first nurse that was there when my son arrived. When he mm-hmm. came home from the hospital. Okay. You know, and since my son passed, we keep in touch. But not like how we used mm-hmm. to. You know, mm-hmm. you know, people got... Life goes on, you know. So, she called me, and that was, her name is Iris, so shout out to Iris. It was good here for her. She shout makes out to Iris. the best mm-hmm. Haitian dishes, so she's like, I got you, girl, your mm-hmm. black rice and oxtails and dumplings. I said, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. You know, and just, um, just all the love I was getting, you know, it was just a little things this time that I didn't try to make an extravagant dinner, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, which is cool, but that just wasn't how I was feeling this year. I just mm-hmm. wanted to relax. My dad took me out for lunch, okay. but he take me out to lunch every year, but this is the first time we went this early, so okay. I'm like, dang, dang, he called me, be ready by 11.30, I'm like, 11.30. <laughs> 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 <That's my name. laughs> breakfast. I got to do my tag. Um, 
But I, yeah, I do be excited to go to the grocery store. The, uh, the little <laughs> sweet girl that always helped me, she's always there whenever I go. She's like, I'll help you with your bag. I'm like, come on. Yeah, yeah, your family raises you right. And, um, let's see. So I'm, I'm getting used to parking in the handicapped space. This week, I thought somebody took them all, and I was about to raise hell. Now, I know anybody <laughs> took my handicapped parking. How the fuck I'm like, I'm not riding my scooter all the way to the bottom of the parking lot. <laughs> School is always good. Yeah. You feel know? Oh my god. Kids probably look like, I want one. <laughs> no, you don't. But you know what I noticed? I noticed how sweet and how considerate and helpful people are when you're, I guess, I handicapped. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so weird to, say you're, to consider yourself that, but you know, job. And you not, just, not job. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't now walk, so yeah, the temporary world, yeah. Um, but it's always cool to see how, how much people, how nice people are. Right. And how they're like, oh, you need this? Oh, 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 oh. Stop. I'll get it. And it's like, well, thank you. You know, I'm a, I was going to ask you, you know what I'm saying? But I appreciate it. And then it's always, um, what I've noticed now is people who have broken something in the past. They're like, oh, left ankle uh, of 1985. <laughs> it was a cold day in, in August. I, mean, I got a story for you. And then one lady... Had her surgery done by my doctor. Mm-hmm. Damn. But we, we, you know, we're all in the same experience while I was with her. And she was like, oh, yeah, Quack was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to go back and do this and do that and then this and that. And I'm like, well, shit. Like, right over at the Roswell Center. I was like, yeah. I'm like, damn. Wait, that's something. Mm-hmm. My doctor got a popping in these streets. That can show you how everything is all connected in some way. Like, yeah, at least mostly white people don't talk to. <laughs> But it's so sweet and understanding. Oh, yeah. So kind. <laughs> I, you know what? This was a good week, too. At work, I had ran into some really nice white people. And I, I hate to <laughs> and I hate for it to sound like that, but you would be surprised how many fucked up ones I run across before I meet some really nice ones. Okay. Like, yeah. That shit is... That is like the best feeling. It's just finding a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Like, that shit be like, oh, thank you. You're not a dick. Oh, I appreciate it. Yes, I'm Why? Fine. I, 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 I always say thank you, you know the dick. The fuck? How was that weekend? What you, you get settled yet for moving? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> There's still boxes and shit everywhere. You tired uh, of looking at it, too, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I unpacked like three boxes and somehow I still, I have more boxes in the motherfucker after unpacking than it was. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you got to buy like like trash cans and mm-hmm. you know, that kind of shit to get the job set up. So I'm looking around, I unpacked a shitload of pictures, like 25 pictures and set some other shit up. I'm like, it's still just a shitload. <laughs> like, where the fuck did all these boxes come from? It's starting to invade my dreams. Man. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah. How long have you got to you think you totally unpacked <coughs> and situated? And Some of that room. shit is going in the fucking trash. He <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before he boxed it up. <laughs> So much of that Look, shit. Look, he's so tired of looking at that shit. He yeah. just like, fuck it. I'm just going to put this in the trash. Yeah. Like, I'm going to take out what I need. Hold up, though. Box hold up, dude. You got to tell her how much, like. <laughs> oh, yeah, he had a shit ton of shit. I believe it. Oh, my God. I didn't realize how much shit I had. And I threw most of my stuff away. I was proud of myself. <laughs> I was like, wow, well, I really threw all that shit away in this most. Now you look at that with that bullshit, like. I actually thought I was going to need this shit when I walked out of that motherfucker. Oh, why I moved out here with a left-handed screwdriver? Why did I pack this left-handed hammer? I'm right here. Yo, I'm sorry. That shit is bad. I mean, it really got a lot. These left-handed blunts. Why did I bring these left-handed blunts? But that's what it be. You be shit, you be like... Like, why did I... I made a decision to win this. Yeah, right. Right, like, why? Like... I, I, I wasn't possibly going to need this shit over here. Anyway, so that has been a problem. Then he brought his lawnmower. <laughs> All right, bring his so lawnmower. You only had three boxes this whole weekend, huh? Oh, no, nah, I didn't nah, it was about, it was about four or five boxes at least. But okay. I, like I said, I, I, don't, I don't know why, but it's like 
It's more boxes. So I, don't, I don't know what happened. I thought I unpacked them, but I don't know. Maybe. I don't know what happened. Anyway, so the other thing that happened, uh, shout out to Swan, who is not here today, but um, his, his little man actually had a birthday, so we hung out at his birthday party this week. Gilman. Okay. Yeah, which was a whole lot of fun. We went to a new bouncy joint that opened up. I don't want y'all stalking my folks, so I ain't gonna tell you where the fuck it is or what his fucking name is, but I don't know fuck it is. But anyway, okay. um, we went to a bouncy jump and it was a whole lot of fun. <laughs> like they took good care of us. Now I'm just, I, I'm a little, you know, I, I mentioned his kids. I ain't trying to bring no, no yeah. nothing into that. So yeah, but that was a lot of fun. So the kids had a lot of fun this weekend. Mm -hmm. It's been an interesting weekend with the kids. I mean, it's been fun. Uh, we are about 12 minutes on the podcast, about 15 minutes on the the live stream, and we ain't introduced the show or nothing. We ain't, we ain't uh, told them what we're doing. We can't get back. back. We can't get back. They know. They know. They know. They know. Facts. All right. Let's get back on track. Because <laughs> we, got, we got a ridiculous show, like the Jesse Smothered, the R. Kelly shit. The um, goddamn our new music playlist, motherfucking, uh, it's a, a shit ton of shit to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, Donald Trump Show Stupid Award, Andre Ingram Brian the Sound Award, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, shit, Meek's ex boyfriend, um, Tristan Thompson, uh, and Chico no, Floyd. I mean, hey, boom. We got a lot to talk about. <laughs> but let's get into it, let's do the intro, get this shit popping, uh, set my stomach in. Uh, Get my chest right. You look like you got gas. Stop. Nah, I got muscles. Relax. It's muscles. It's no, muscles. that look like gas. You look wow. like you real gas. Wow. <laughs> Just Hello. let it go. Yes, you How are you doing? That's the joke from coming to America. She's like, I can't even relax if you're going to be around me. All right, so anyway. Oh, okay. You, you know what I'm saying? Come to America. Yes, I did, but I didn't know that's what you was trying to do. Look, look, that one like this one I'm going. No. <laughs> they ain't like you got gas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm cutting on my gold teeth. That's what that shit was doing to his back, trying to sit up straight. Like that. That, that nigga couldn't even get the smile out right. That shit hurt so bad. Cry. Why like, you got those butt cheeks tight in the bottom? Like, don't you do it. Don't you no, do it. No, no, no. Cut on my gold, Jimmy. Cut on my gold. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so. I host a show by myself. So today we're going to talk about yeah. Justice Money. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you set yourself up for that one, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny as shit. All right. Well, all right. Welcome to Kickback TV, <laughs> live from Atlanta, also known as the Black CNN. <laughs> that thing, that thing, no doubt, you ain't shit. And the revolution uh, will be laughed at. Then you would know. <laughs> then, oh my god. Yo, look at his face. Why are you talking to us so please don't do it? We all lie. Whatever. I was looking like how I'm keen on coming to work. No, you want to. I ain't with him and he's Isn't he that look, wonderful? Hey, yeah. let's do let's do a poll. Was he looking like I'm keen or was he looking like yeah. a gas sex commercial? Yeah, he leave like, comments on gel YouTube. Caps. Or tablet. Like, 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 oh my god. <laughs> like barely restrained, like <sighs> just hang on. Ten more seconds. Ooh, I can't wait too much. Ooh. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> so <laughs> that was some funny shit. And I'm new the mayor of Righteous Ratchet. If you throw it, I catch it. If you got it, I match it every Monday on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts. We right back at it. Shout out, man, fantastic. You and me.
Yeah, yeah. Oh. Damn, you missed all that? I did. I'm not. Wow. Where I'm, you I mean, I'm, I'm somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Me and the All Star game. It was last week, though. She still there. She just, you know, nah, I ain't good. that far back. That's a good one. I ain't that far back. I feel good, man. The last I'm week, in. we were sitting all here like this. Yeah. Look, Jamie won't say shit. They were like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was blind <laughs> watching the game, yeah. We were like Yeah, we just zoned the fuck out. The conversation be good, like, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit, who what do y'all introduce yourself? Oh, I'm just me. Kickback TV with my homeboy J B and Nunu. Mm-hmm. Motherfucking me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. What's up, y'all? I am J B Frank. <laughs> <laughs> that, that gangsta heat represent. <laughs> what? What the hell was that? What was that? She made me laugh. That nigga did a Kawhi Leonard laugh. Alright, alright. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> shit. This nigga did a Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> Okay. I'm definitely <laughs> taking that laugh and making that a sound effect and putting it on. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I'm not gangsta keep representing. And then stop. <laughs> you wasn't ready. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to be hard. I'm about to walk out of here. <laughs> you ain't representing shit. I'm about to represent your NWA nurse for attitude. <laughs> I got it out. Oh my god. Let's get this shit oh, crazy. Come on, no, no. Oh. <laughs> That's All right. Um, you ain't right. Thank y'all for tuning in tonight. <laughs> Don't try to play that shit on me. We'll see y'all next week. I did not. I did not. I did not. I did not. We'll see y'all next week, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. <laughs> you knew I was going to say something. I don't even know why you uh, cried. Oh, I was yeah. not going to let that slide. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. I'm not gonna be able to talk, y'all maybe ask you all the whole show. Uh, uh, what was, what was, uh, uh, number one topic, topic, the hot topic was Jesse Smollett. <laughs> um oh, Yeah, god. so apparently they now have locked him up, right? New uh, yeah. 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 Well they, yeah. I mean they turn okay, I mean but the funny thing was just the amount of weird information that keeps coming out um, in terms of what happened. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like they got a written check for 3500 for training. Like, mm-hmm. come on, you can always write down what you substitute this type of money for. That's why he did a check. I mean, it's common sense. He could have cashed them out. Yeah. He leaving too much of a paper trail, and that's even making him look guilty, too. Because he, he thought right. this shit out. It, it, it is like... And at first, like, he wrote the check. I was like, dear God. Right. Like, he, like, why would you? Then he put it for training. I'm like. But how many checks have he written before for training? Right. I mean, it, it's just. The thing is, <laughs> the two brothers confessed. Right. According to Chicago PD. They said he paid us to beat him up. So any of this information that's coming out now is, in my opinion, information to lower, to lessen the felony. To, to try to make it so it's not a felony. To make it a, a, a misdemeanor, um, because I'm like, they confessed. Well, the Chicago PD lied and said we got confession. Like, what, like what the fuck? What are we even debating? And then I was watching how the news came out. You know, you know, first when it first came out, we were a handful of us were like, oh, I'm not sure. I'm a little skeptical. I'm not sure. I gotta wait and see. And then you know, black feminists was like, fuck you, motherfucker. You, you, you homophobic. You don't care about gay men. And you only care about straight people. And Black men, white men in the black race, and then all that shit. And then when the story came up from the Chicago PD that he was lying and that lie this wasn't true, um, then you know the black feminists shut the fuck up, and straight black men started going, "See why y'all jumping on us?" And now they're like, "Here's another twist. He really didn't pay them for that." And I'm just like, "My God, like, like, what's next? You gonna say you found the two MAGA hat wearers?" Mm-hmm. Is that coming on next week? Mm-hmm. That he actually found it and he was telling the truth? And it's like the media is like 
Like, we're palms. They're just like, believe this. No, 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 believe that. No, 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 Go back and believe that. No, 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 You believe this over here. No, 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 no. believe that. And that's how I'm starting to feel like they, what they're doing with me, let alone with the ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm a pretty fucking intelligent nigga. And, they, and they're, I'm doing this. I've been on the fence with it. I was never like, uh, fuck Jesse, he's 100% lying. I was like, this is going to sound right. And then, like, and I got a tape for the shit. But then now I'm like, well, shit, they just keep moving me back and forth. And I don't like that. I don't like nobody that had that much control over my fucking thoughts. And this shit is, is a thing that's, bothered, that's pissing me off. How y'all feel? Well, I mean, it from a, a G E I mean, purely from a financial perspective, if you're in this cat's camp, it's very easy to feed the media misinformation and make sure that that shit makes mainstream. You have enough. You have enough contacts. You have enough channels. You have enough cash to make that happen pretty easily and pretty regularly. And what that does for him. Even though he's facing a grand jury, is it influences his jury pool? Um, that is a classical defensive tactic. It is corny as hell. It is fucked up. But that's that's what guilty motherfuckers do. <laughs> is try and they bust their gun. They try and convince people that they're innocent, especially on their way to court. You know what I'm saying? Because the same motherfuckers who were defending him back in the day when all of the information was weird, they might be the motherfuckers who decide he's not guilty of what he did. You know? Yeah. Even on a grand jury. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I just think that they probably just want to make an example out of him, pretty much. But it can go either way. Like you say, not guilty. Him being a celebrity and probably people feeling sorry for him, pitying him, will make them like not make that decision, mm -hmm. you know, or being a fact of who he is and how he went about the situation. That's going to make them want to punish him for it. So it, it can really go either way at this point. My whole thing is <clears throat> if he if he really is, if it really was 100 percent thought out like that and executed like that. I just feel like, you know, and you still holding on, like, let's tell the truth at this point. I mean, everybody's already, like, thinking twice against you. Just if, if it is not true, just admit that you fucked up and you didn't expect for it to come out to be that way. At least you can save face and still get some type of word. You keep carrying this out like that and you're blatantly guilty. Nobody ain't gonna wanna touch you. I don't think anybody really want to touch him right now. Yeah, they're going to let it die down, son. He's going to come back in on DC list movies or Netflix or Hulu mm -hmm. movies or some shit like that. Anybody curious about the silence <clears throat> of the LGBTQ? Yeah, they always on, <clears throat> on us about stuff we don't agree with. And let me say one thing about this. You know, I hate y'all how y'all attack straight people for not, you know, conforming to y'all lifestyle. You know, you shouldn't do that. That's because we don't want to see it or be in the middle of it or participate in it. That doesn't mean we hate you. No, you live in your truth. I can never be mad at that. But don't try to force your lifestyle on me. You know, don't try to make us accept what y'all got going on. I can respect you for who you are, but I don't want nothing to do with that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, just be mindful and respectful of us too, man. We tired of y'all always attacking us when we say something we don't agree or, you know, anything of that nature. We're not disrespecting none of y'all at all. But at the same time, this man coming out here using y'all community as a crutch in his attack and now it's starting to come out to be false, but I can understand if they're trying to make sure he's proven guilty before they mm -hmm. say anything. Mm -hmm. They don't want to jump the gun. <clears throat> but jump the gun when it's convenient. Right. I That's see. true, too. And I can't take that away from you either. But I'm just seeing how this going to play off. Y'all really need to address him, too, and show him the punishment you would show anybody else that's going in, you know, a part of y'all community. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it in very simple terms, um, this is somebody who tried to put one racial or ethnic or social group, he tried to pit one against another for his own personal gain. You know, it's a really, really, really bad thing that he did. 
So now he's facing the consequences, the legal actions of what he did. But I agree with y'all. He should, like the community that he basically, you know, abused, <clears throat> the LGBT community that he abused by doing this shit. And black. Well, yeah, and the black community. Right. They called him the, but you the see- nigger faggot from Empire. So it was black and gay. So did you see uh, Faison's response to that? Yeah, I did. I actually okay. did. I actually did. And so what was your opinion on it? Did you agree? Um, with Faison, I got a... I want to hear it coming from a, a straight black man. Yeah, at the end right? of the day, he pretty much talked about, like, pretty much fuck all that shit. We need to worry about building our own things. Right. Now, he had some commentary in the beginning of it that I was kind of like, eh, whatever. But his end result was, we need to take care of our own shit and do our own shit. I was with that. The beginning part, it was, I don't remember much about the beginning. I know he was kind of breaking down his opinion on it. But his final thought was, we need to worry about our own shit and get our own shit together. That way, but they don't, don't fuck with us. And we ain't got to worry about who they come for. And this is this because we're doing our own. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. Am I right or wrong? Basically, he's saying like everybody else say, nobody should be attacked because of their sexual preference and who they, you know, choose to carry themselves in. It's not affecting you. But at the same time, when he was stating that, you know, like you said, we have to take care of our own. Fuck him being gay. He's a black man at the end of the day. You know, we need to, you know, give him time, build him up, encourage him. You know, because regardless of what, he's still an investment in our community. He is an actor. He can, whatever he makes, if he chooses to go that way, he can reinvest it anywhere. You yeah, know? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. Like, just because, like, what? The best way to say it is like like Tupac said it like in '96. Like I don't believe in no imaginary race. Right, to support everybody that's black. I support my tribe. You know what I'm saying? Everybody black ain't my brother. Everybody black ain't with me. Everybody black ain't with this this missing I'm with. So I don't just sit around and just just because you black you get my love. Or just because you black you get my vote. Or just because you black you get my protection. Like so, everybody that's black ain't black. You I understand that, but if it's somebody that's black that's starting a business, I will give you my business first and see oh, how absolutely. you treat me. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I will and, always support my own. And like you said, every black man ain't your brother at the same time. That's why we trying to kill that mentality, trying to bring it. You know, it's going to take time, you know, because we, we always at each other. We are. But I mean, it just, it's every, no human, every human ain't my brother. Like, not just, it's not like I sing it all. Black people, every white person that was ain't my brother, every Chinese person ain't my brother. Like it just is what it is. That's that's human nature. My thing with um with the notion that I'm supposed to wrap my arms around Jesse is kind of like, well, it is like supporting the black business. Supporting them, I watched at least the first season. They can watch the second season. I ain't like the show. I don't watch it no more. It, it, that's been what it's been for years. Mm-hmm. And this, if he came on all this is last. I am slick fucked up with him. I'm gonna say, like, what the fuck wrong with you, dog? Get the fuck up out of here. I'm not supporting you just because you're black. Then you did this bad man shit. Right. Like, yeah. and if it comes out that they twist all the information and everybody lied on him and he's 100% innocent and he didn't lie about shit, I'm gonna ride with him harder than anybody else. Right. But right now, I've always said he was lying. I still believe he's lying. Mm-hmm. And as long as I think he's lying, I'm going to treat him like that liar. But if, if tomorrow morning the truth comes out and he's innocent and everybody was in conspiracy to, to set him up, guess who will be his biggest support? I go with the truth. I don't have no agenda. You know what I'm saying? I don't support people just because they black. I don't not support people just because they gay. I'm with the truth. Mm-hmm. So whatever the truth turns out to be, I'm going to ride with that. Right, right, right. Exactly. And every girl can wear thong. Yes, they can. It's going to dangle a little bit. They can wear it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Wow. Yeah. Dude, I, we, we, that's all I'm going to put. Right is right and wrong is wrong and every girl can wear thong. It's going to dangle a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's going to dangle a little bit. Mississippi. Damn, like sweet. Come back. I know. Country. Oh my God. I love it. I thought it was Walmart. She had like the baggiest thong on. She had like a thong bathing suit. Man, that shit was dangling at the bottom. I was like, damn. I thought you got a thong bathing suit and it's dangling. Turn it on my stomach. 
I don't even understand how that works. It does. It oh, really does. And Ron said they would have had a straight motherfucking head on a plate if he would have lied on some gay people. Right. Or something like that. Right. That's true. That's true. That's yeah, true. that's what makes it kind that's of true. frustrating. They pick and choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people want us to support. I, I've seen people say that. Keep that same energy just... with everybody else. Come yeah. on. Even if it's your own. Let's well, I mean that that type of energy clearly isn't what's going on because how many how many murders of black people have we talked about on this show that are are in prevalent media are all over the place? You know what I'm saying? This shit has blown up social media, um, and it's the same kind of hate crime that we've been seeing now for years. That's yeah. and it's purportedly that it's looking like it wasn't even that. So now I'm dually angry. We gotta hold people accountable to their crimes. That's exactly. They hold people right. accountable so the the weight of the punishment fits the crime, and that, that's bringing up the story of the two robbers, Robert Kelly and Robert Kraft. Mm -hmm. um, R. Kelly seemingly got slaps on the wrist for his behavior in the past, and they, they're trying to throw the book at Robert Kraft for just buying some pussy. Which I'm like, which they are already doing anyway. Exactly. But I, before we get into everything, I want to run and get very specific to R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. So we know we're going to the robbers, but let's talk about R. Kelly right now. Mm -hmm. R. Kelly um, has finally, and I use the word finally, uh, been arrested for uh, sexual abuse, pedophilia, I don't know what the exact charge is, but having sex with a minor, that's probably the charge. Um, two women that were between the ages of 14 and 16, from the late 90s to the early 2000s, and he's in police custody. Um, in Chicago, this is Chicago PD has been on it. They got Jesse Smollett, they got R. Uh, Kelly. They might be the ones that picked up Robert Kraft in uh, Florida. I don't know. Chicago PD been doing a lot right now. I don't know nobody go to Chicago right now. Five, don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's that problem. Mm. It's still shut right. Exactly, exactly. But they've been they've been going they've been going after the folks who doing. They've been going after the big ones though. That's for damn sure. Once it's in the media, they've been taking care of it, you know. Yeah, I'll tell you behind bars. How mm -hmm. you guys feel? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, ten different accounts of uh, sexual assault that they have charged him with. Um, I, th I also believe he was denied bail, so he gonna they, be there. They just opened the house for a million dollar bill, which means he had to pay a hundred thousand okay. dollars. His lawyer saying he doesn't even have the hundred thousand, and I'm like, I can't even have a hundred thousand dollars. Understand. <laughs> that man. He must have spent a whole lot on y'all wedding when y'all get married. Don't do me like that. I have never been married that man. I understand the jokes, Kiki. Don't do me like that. <laughs> <laughs> that never <laughs> no, That nigga is, he is, y'all probably. But you yeah. know, hey, your thing is you recording yourself too, so you got three tapes that got turned in. They said, I think the youngest I said that they said probably could have been ten if I Jesus. read that right properly. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was ten between the ages of ten to fifteen. So they say. But I want to know who was the person turning in these tapes. It was a. Uh, it was an officer that got a hold of them, but I don't know who who they got it from. I think somebody oh, turned it in to them that was yeah, close who, to him. Who was that person? That, that, yeah. that's, that's the question. I mean, I'll tell you, dumbass, disgusting human being, but you can be disgusting and not be a dummy. Why are you taping yourself? They say on one of the tapes, he literally says, you know, there's some good 14-year-old pussy. That's why I said he, he is, it's messed up. Mm -hmm. something wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly something wrong with him, but they can figure that shit out while he's in jail. Right. Um, you know, for yeah. real. Um, this is somebody who needs to be confined somewhere so that he can no longer hurt other individuals. You know, if they wasn't going to get him in Cook County in Chicago, he damn sure wasn't coming back to Atlanta either because mm -hmm. they were looking for him in Fulton County and I think when that county down here um, behind some of the things that some of the women on the show actually went to the police about mm -hmm. that happened in Atlanta. So, yeah, I mean, the, right, the handwriting was on the wall for him. And, you know, I guess let justice be done, finally. 
Niggas out of Chicago finish charging and they gonna send his ass to Atlanta and have them prosecute them too. And that shit is ass to a comma so we can get him one good fucking time. I think the whole black racist wanna throw R. Kelly away. Cause he was only doing with little black girls. It wasn't little white girls, little Asian girls, little Spanish girls. Don't be surprised. Don't, don't be surprised. He could he could have. Have. Niggas, but it's only coming out. All of these accounts are, are black women. You think it's some secret accounts we don't know about? I mean, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. But I wouldn't think other races. You got to understand, going overseas and stuff, they sell kids. They sell... They sell kids, they sex traffic kids, they, and it, it'll yeah. be their own parents. It don't really be anybody else. You say, like, that shit on, um, remember uh, The Hangover 2, when they went back to the strip club, and mm-hmm. he was like, the boy, he was gonna buy the boy, or whatever. Yeah, like that one part in there, that shit real. Yeah, it, was, it was weird, yeah, yeah, it was weird. Um, and you're right, <clears throat> um, the, what's probably, I mean, don't be surprised if he winds up in some kind of minimum security situation mm-hmm. on an insanity plea or on a yeah, severe yeah, mental insane. disturbance plea because I mean this is like serial killer type right, shit we're is. talking about here. So he's gonna be on behind bars probably for the rest of his life, yeah. but it ain't gonna be you know, he ain't gonna be in there with knock knock and, and Debo and shit. You know, it's gonna be it's just thirty some years. Some people, yeah. people yeah. Mental, thirty different. years of accusations, man. 30 mm-hmm. years. Wow. So you think he's going away? Like, I mean, it yeah, looks like he is. Yeah, he better go away. Man, the only possible options are matter. that he it's goes to now. a mental hospital or he goes the fuck to jail. He either goes the fuck to jail as yeah. a serial rapist or he goes to a mental hospital as somebody who is batshit crazy. Those are the only, like, like you said, like, how fucking dumb do you have to be to put that shit on tape? It shows that you're fucking crazy. It's an easy fucking defense. If I were a, a shady defensive lawyer, I'd be. Mm. This no, is he a quick, also could have been copying enough. This is a quick 200 enough. grand. Like, this is oh, easy. Copy. Okay, he just copy enough. You know, he probably feel he's untouchable at this point. He feel like that none uh-huh. of that stuff gonna get discovered. He keeping that for a keepsake of itself. He ain't thinking about being caught. I'm saying that the prosecution's biggest problem is going to be convincing the world that R. Kelly isn't crazy. Yeah, he's yeah. they going to say to be a sanity thing like that mental. Exactly. Because oh his best case scenario is to either go to a mental hospital or to say that, yes, I have this mental problem, but a lot of this shit is bullshit. Those are his two options. That's that never happened because when I was a kid, I got abused, mm-hmm. which is what he's been saying. Um, yeah, that, that song I admit, I confess, whatever that came out, I listened to whenever they had the R. Kelly document, documentary, and he pretty much confessed. So, I mean, I don't, I don't fucking know. But all for that shit, and on to this shit, the second of the Roberts, JB's close personal friend, Robert Kraft, from his time in Boston. You know, JB went to Harvard, he was in, he did the Boston like, what, 10 years? 13 years. 13 years, so, you know what I'm saying? He got Red Sox handle. <laughs> I do. Actually, you're right. I do. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm So, JB's close personal friend, Robert Clark. <coughs> He's not my close personal friend. All right, JB, break down Say, your yeah. boy and what's happened. And I'll, I'll tell you how I feel about it. But I know this is your friend, so I'm going to give you the opportunity to frame it the way you want to. The long and short of it is that he was picked up, arrested, um, you know, for uh, solicitation. Uh, apparently, he paid, you know, <laughs> He paid a woman to have sex. And, you know, the article kind of goes into detail about the definition of the act, whatever. Um, But the long and short of it is that now he's being brought up on charges for solicitation. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, this has created a little bit of a social media uh, backlash because, um, I mean, it seems like it's getting a little more airtime than you would expect something that's relatively minor to new. Um, and that leads people to wonder whether or not this is a way to defame an individual who, while he is a pillar of the white conservative community, like friends with, you know, friends with Donald Trump, running the most successful NFL team mm-hmm. in league history, mm-hmm. you know, he is, he is one of those white guys. But now he's talking about prison reform. 
And now he's wearing a gold chain that Meek gave him. Yeah, and, 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 and at like public events, you know. Um, he's working with Cardi B on mm -hmm. stage. He's living his best life. He took Meek off for her birthday. Oh damn, we bought the fuck out too. So it's a little, it's a little different now. It makes you wonder, like, is this, is this being blown out of the water because mm -hmm. of that? Because honestly, let's mm -hmm. keep it honest, y'all. Like, this ain't that big a deal. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, as long as the woman was consenting and was of age, there what the is. fuck? I can't tell a woman what she can and can't do with her body. If she would like to sell her sex, it ain't she my can body. Sell her sex. Then she can sell it. I can't tell a woman if she can have an abortion or not. Uh, then I can't tell her she want to sell her vagina or not. That's up to that woman. And if she's of legal age and she was consenting, then what the? Yeah, 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 yeah,
They renting to own, I guess. Is that I mean, I'm not going to disagree with you. Instagram uh, is like for that type of shit. That's Renaissance right now. I had to say, pussy <laughs> should never be free. Um, pussy is free quite often, um, but they should or shouldn't. I don't know. To the Hey Family and JB. <laughs> Damn. So uh, Ron said you know, more marijuana, of course. Um, I look at it like Bob Craft. I mean, buying pussy, you know, it is a crime. You know, crime to me and. I hope it doesn't have any negative effect on his efforts with prison reform. They exactly. do Van Jones, Jay Z, Meek Mill, um, uh, the, the uh, Alabama, the, um, that runs the Philadelphia 76ers. All of these people have come together. Mark Rubin have come together to say, wait a minute, this prison shit is wrong. Mm -hmm. Black people are being prisoned disproportionately, right. and it's fucked up, mm -hmm. and I want to help. And then now this happens. I just hope that this wasn't like a, you want to help, motherfucker? Well, we got you. You, sure, you want to help? <laughs> well, you can help. You know what I'm saying? I hope it wasn't that. And just for the record, prostitution should be legal and probation should be illegal. Probation is the worst fucking thing that has happened to the criminal justice system. Um, well, mismanaged probation, I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. I, um, just for myself, I have lost jobs, girls, lifestyle, Hope and faith all for probation and bullshit, erroneous mm -hmm. probation violations that I shouldn't even gone through. So, what? like, fuck probation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn. You just, what? damn. What? Damn. What? damn. What? I'm damn. Like TV, like. I'm open, guys. She's like. Open, guys. She said, like. <laughs> yeah, that was a great play. Uh, that that like. job was tighter than that. That job like, was tight as shit. That job was tight as shit. I'm trying to run a podcast here. I'm trying to run a podcast, you guys. <laughs> shit. That shit was nasty, though. It was corny. And again, fuck probation. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I know. Well, I will relate my probation stories on another day, but you're right. It's it's a money game, and it's fucked up. Let's move, let's move on to Tristan and Chloe. <laughs> All right, and we have a young lady that Tristan cheated with right here. Me, tell us what happened. Well, you know, I've been trying to tell her the same way you lose them and the same way you catch them. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's true. You know, it, it, it is what it is, man. It's just like she just she just hurt. I mean, but clearly this man has been embarrassed. You I don't know how many times. You know, I understand that's the father of her child, so you know he's gonna be back around. She gonna try to work it out. I don't know, maybe, you know, how they bound back because she might be with another nigga in three weeks. Yep. So. You <laughs> nah, nah. But, you know, I don't have no sympathy for her. I mean, just suck it up. I mean, shit, we all go through it. Sorry ass nigga. Keep it moving. Yeah, I mean. That's but with I the mean. sister, though. But with the sister, though. Mm -hmm. But I don't think. Kylie want to really get rid of her. She just got to do it because that's her sister. You know, y'all yeah, with she, your that's sister. That's because she's with Kylie Jenner's best yeah, friend. Yeah, her best friend that lives in her house. Um, yeah, that lives in her house. I, I, I mean, it's... When you breed a scandalous environment, you you reap what you sow. So when you, you sow really a scandalous shit. environment, that's what you All the shit she probably knows mm -hmm. too is leverage. If they like, oh, you want to play? Well, I'll tell them this. You know, they really, she got to know some shit. I can't wait to if something like that get real scandalous. But then too, Chris Jenner don't play. She don't play because you know, she going to be on top of that. You know, you know, you know Caitlyn uh, well, Bruce killed the nigga in the car in real life and got all for it. So they're kidding the car. Like, I don't put nothing past some Kardashians. Now, that's what that's what the name is, car that shit. And they kill you with a car. I knew he was about to go there. That's the fact. Look it up. Everybody think I'm playing. Bruce Jenner or Caitlyn, whatever you want to call him, killed a person with his car. All right, y'all. <laughs> facts. <laughs> no, that's really true. Like, you can really no, look. it's just like facts. <laughs> <laughs> he put that motherfucker on his <laughs> Met that shit, did <laughs> Got our what the fuck story of the day. Um, Burberry and other high fashion mm. labels are now 
doing these basically racist ad came, campaigns. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, 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 I'm not even confident enough to say that it started out with Gucci because I think it started with, a little bit before then with H&M. Oh, yeah. and, oh, yeah. and, uh, the outrage market. Well, recently H&M. Yeah, yeah um, you know, honestly, this is, this is a sign of the times. Like, racial, racial tension is coming from the White House. You know, so America, a lot of us, is, a lot of us live in, you know, kind of cosmopolitan areas where there's a mixture of people. Keep, let's keep it real, America. That ain't what the rest of America is. That ain't even what most of America is. Right. Most of America is white. Like, let's just, don't delude yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so there are people who are willing to appeal to that racist white market. Like, it's out there. It exists. You and see they, how Trump is he living good off that shit. Exactly my point. And they feel at liberty, even more at liberty to do that shit when you got somebody like Trump in the White House. Mm -hmm. That's what I think is going on. You know, with the same mental <laughs> mm -hmm. level as they are. <laughs> yes, yes. For him, for him, just to hear him speak and carry himself, it's just like really good. Like you don't even know what you're talking about. You just saying what sounds good, and that's sad. Like all that money, you can't pay nobody to at least write for you to speak or teach yourself how to speak. You just sound like a moron. I just cannot take him seriously, even though I need to be on top of everything he's doing because it affects me. It affects us. Are you kidding me? He couldn't even pay his fucking construction workers when he was building buildings in Vegas and Jersey and all over everywhere. Like he is. A notorious swindler like he's been mm -hmm. bankrupt two times in my memory and still calls himself a billionaire he said he said he saw you know bankruptcy as a financial tool like what the fuck are we really talking about here like come on yeah. it's just, I mean, well, look how it helps save you know all his investments I'm saying some of them enough of them to keep his Statue, standing some claim, whatever. Um, but um, and looking at it, the thing with Trump is, oh, let's get off Trump. <laughs> let's get to. He's like, he felt that one in his spirit. He like, yeah, you know what? Let's stick to the clothing. Not gonna go there. Let's stay yeah, because yeah, because I don't want to get distracted. These clothing lines. Are doing these uh, ads? These you no, know, uh, uh, beer brain with the noose on and that. They knew what the fuck. Um, Mont, Mar, Montel, Montel, I don't know where that shit. Whatever that Montclair in New York. That's be New York fashion. Um, and uh, Gucci with the, the black face. Mm -hmm. And H and M with the little boy, the coolest monkey in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Um, they are saying something. And what I've noticed is, you ever notice like when a nuke style comes out, everybody's on it. Mm -hmm. When skinny jeans came out, everybody coincidentally at the same time made skinny jeans. When, you know, these big, men. yeah, well, no, it's face us, man. I mean, um, them men. Yeah. When um, big baggy clothes, the, the, the <laughs> 5X t-shirts, all that shit Remember was in baby. style. Everybody was doing that, all yeah. the clothing lines. So some kind of way, they all communicate. This ain't all telepathic. You know what I'm saying? So some kind of way, I feel like the way was, we going with this racially offensive shit. This is the new way. This is the new skinny jean. And then they all doing it. Because I'm like, why are they all doing it? Like, it, it, it could have been one. It could have been just two. But when it's so many, you start going like, well, damn. And the thing about... I didn't get the memo. What Burberry was, you going to come out with this right after this whole situation with Gucci and blackface though? You right. already seen the uproar about that. Yeah, yeah, at this point, you gonna still you. It's like intentional stuff. You did this to have this backlash, so you could give an apology. Blah blah blah. Like, come on. Here. And, and, and boost yourself. <laughs> um, I'm not. How about this? Let's start with this. Um, I am. I have stopped being a proponent of the boycott. Um, I never was initially, and then I started being like, "Fuck it, they're doing too much shit. I got to boycott them." Then I was like, uh, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. But I wouldn't 
all these lines that are apologizing, mm-hmm. I, I might like if you don't boycott everyone, I would say make a conscious effort to not support. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying boycott. I said, make a conscious effort to not support, unless it's just something that really speaks to you and you're like, no, but this one is this. And then make a conscious effort to find the alternative black business. I don't want to just tell you, like, like in the 80s, just say no. I want to give you something to say yes to. Because saying just say no, if you ain't got nothing else to do, was a weird thing. Let's get high. No. But I want to. Let's get high. No, I'm going to go read a book. Let's get high. No, I'm going to go help the homeless people downtown. Let's get high. No, I'm going to play PlayStation. Like, give them an alternative. So, I'm not telling you to boycott all these clothing lines. I think you should. I'm not telling you to. I'm just saying, when you walk into the mall, I'm like, oh, H&M, you know, maybe go, what's that black clothing line around the corner for me? I'm going to go in there and just see if I like some shit. Mm-hmm. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But before you go spend money there, that's what I'm saying. Try to find one black-owned clothing line that will replace them. And if you can't, try to find two. And if you can't, then do whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. But at least try. Feel me? Mm-hmm. Find some resources. But, you know, that's one thing about, uh, who was it, Jay-Z and someone else partner of them. I can't really remember. But they're putting together an app to where they're going to Diddy, Jay-Z and Diddy. Okay. Black on business, yeah. businesses in your area. Yeah, so that'll probably be a good tool for everybody to register then since everybody on their phone yeah. and everything savvy. You can just, mm-hmm. I'd like to see how that come about. So at least you'll have a better way to, you know, find someone that's in your city or even if not, if they ship or anything. So yeah. I think it would be a cool little outlet for real. Yeah, I mean, they used to have like the black pages back in the day, which was crucial for me because. I used to travel place to place, and that was where you it had a list city mm-hmm. by city by mm-hmm. city, where the black barber shops were, mm-hmm. where the black, you know. And that's gone now. I don't. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Um, you know, in years, like mm-hmm. four or five years. I mean, now honestly, you can just go into Google and just say black restaurants or black businesses, and it'll pull up, a, a, you know, a bunch of good leads for you. But yeah, it's definitely something to look out for, um, because there there's some cats who are doing stuff right now. I mean, real, I mean, real, real solid things. There's some, I mean, I've seen some solid clothing for in Atlanta, you know, mm-hmm. that, that I rock with. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I can rock every day, going to work and not going to work. You know what I'm saying? So there are definitely some alternatives out there. Yeah. Um, any last words on that? All right, so um, where we at right now? Oh, Officer Rodriguez in NYC. This is our Donald Trump Shut Up Super Award. <laughs> uh, God damn, we got a couple winners this week. First winner decides that he wants to tell his precinct to shoot and kill 50 Cent on sight. On sight. Then comes back and says, it's just a joke. Then comes back and says 50 Cent is trying to get police officers killed. So what the fuck are we really talking about? What the, what the fuck were you doing when you told your officers to shoot him on sight? If it wasn't for one officer being so bewildered by it and texting all of his friends and family like, what the fuck is going on? The story wouldn't have even gotten out. Mm-hmm. So what, I want to ask you a real question. Do you think the police officer was genuine in his request. Do you think he really wanted 50 Cent killed? Or shot? Me personally, I don't really know. I, I, it's like, if it was some type of video footage for me to pass that judgment, you know, you know, white people humor is very different from black people humor. He probably was saying he, he it in a joking way. He's a, what I would call a white, uh, a white, uh, white Spanish person. Oh, okay, okay. Well, my thoughts is, you know, Maybe he made a joke about it, and even though the joke was kind of like uh, comfortable and settling, like you shouldn't joke about killing somebody like that because it might be one retarded motherfucker that might try to kill him for real, for real. Mm-hmm. You know, so who knows, man? But I, honestly, I don't really know how to take it. I don't really, I just want to know for what. Like, what made him think that or say that? Like, why? You had no idea. That's the only thing I really care about is why. You know, even for it to be a joke, like, what did he do? Or was it something you don't like about him? Or 
I don't know. I think they need a little deeper into that. I need answers. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot to say even jokingly because of who this man is and right. who he said it to. Like, you know, we, we talking about a, a dude who, like, he was talking to a room full of motherfuckers with guns mm-hmm. who can kill on sight legally, <laughs> you know. So what the fuck are we really talking about here? That's crazy. I don't get it. It's not cool. Yeah. Well, you took the topic, Sydney. <laughs> Next topic is Miley Cyrus. Oh. Uh, the, the, the ex-white twerk goddess. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even know she was twerking. Years and years ago, she was twerking, and then she just... Y'all call that twerking? Well, hey. Oh, hey, hey. I mean, I was trying. Man, I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> she got no ass. She got Nasitol. She got that disease, Nasitol. Mm-hmm. Um... Miley denounced hip hop after she made a started framing her career on hip hop music. Hip hop producers dating them as well, and uh, turned her back on and said it was trash and blah 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 blah. And now she's coming back to her hip hop roots. Bitch, you ain't got no hip hop roots. <laughs> That's one. And two. You had to put the bitch on it. Actually, we don't want you back. We really don't. I didn't even. Appreciate you while you were here. That's right. <laughs> I, I, I'll be. I'll go on record as the first person to say I will take Jesse Smollett back before I take Miley Cyrus, little uh, Yankees. Tatiana. And who? I see. Yeah, the Jesse on Empire. So yeah. Yeah. I, I'll watch an episode of Empire before I listen to a Miley Cyrus song. Yeah, this is some uh, stupid cornball shit. Um, but I mean, we've seen other assholes try this shit. For, um, you know, something the, the checks ain't coming in like they supposed to right now. So she, but she gonna try something else right now. Um, I'm gonna be mad if we let her get away with it though. Yeah, yeah you ain't no damn Madonna bitch. Exactly. <laughs> you ain't about no West Stephanie. Fuck about you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we told you love to bitch. Our last shut up stupid award winner new is uh, Roseanne. Roseanne oh, Barr. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. This, <laughs> you, go ahead and break this one down because you showed me the video. <laughs> yeah, mix, mix aunt Roseanne. Oh, God. He, hey man, he used to get top front though, so don't. Whoa! Yeah, whoa, yeah. Whoa, he used to sneak over whoa, there whenever he used to hit me up. Uh, Roseanne used to get him that top. Whoa, he said, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Wow, he was out of order. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this bitch, this is another bitch, Roseanne, um, talking about my baby, Alexandra Acosta Cortez, AOC, you know, congresswoman from New York, for New York, um, basically called her a fur con lover, a big bug eyed something or another. She just said a bunch of disparaging things. About AOC, we don't tolerate that bullshit around here. Yeah, kept was, kept using kept using uh, you know the word bitch to to mm-hmm. refer. Her. I mean, it was it was it was bad. Like it was just corny and offensive. Cause I mean, you literally got the ugliest white woman in North <laughs> America yeah. saying all of these horribly disparaging things about this beautiful, successful. You're looking at it like, wow, like. Yeah, you see like, why she's not on Roseanne. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right. I'm like, you already lost your damn show. The show moved on without you. And doing very well, the cons. I actually liked it. I, I haven't gone back yet because I was so... Well, I, I, I haven't gone back yet. I don't know if I'm going it's to. Entertaining. It's entertaining. It got that slow. Yeah. yeah. It's just ridiculous. It's stupid. And Roseanne don't need a bunch of our time. Fuck that bitch. Shut up, stupid. <laughs> and shut up, stupid, stupid bitch. And moving on. We're not giving that whole lot. All on to the Andre Ingram Grind and Shine Award winner. Two frequent award winners with us, Barack Obama and Steph Curry. Okay. Yeah, the My Brother's Keeper Initiative. Um, they spoke in, I believe, Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steph Curry's hometown a week or so ago. Mm-hmm. Um... People were upset by what Barack said. Yeah, I think we kind of dissected it. I was mm-hmm. like, mm, nah, that's the other one. But what he said was, you know, um, if you're really confident in your finances and y'all ain't getting your money and doing your thing, mm-hmm. you don't need a four pound gold chain on. Because you know what you're doing. And you're like, hey, I got money, I don't need to blow it. 
And if you're really confident in your sexuality, you don't need eight girls around you twerking. Because if you need that much going on, then, you know, what's that say about you? And he said he's happy with his one woman, and he has a strong woman, meaning Michelle. And I applaud all of that. I was a little, well, a little the wrong way because it sounded like he's talking about rappers, and rappers only, or the hip-hop community within the black community. And I'm like, I'm tired of us getting singled out as being the fucking perpetrators and everything bad. But then I realized my brother's keeper goes out to you know, young black men in the inner city who don't have positive male role models. So you're looking at them as the lost of the lost. And so maybe you do tell them they don't need to get a go team. Maybe you do tell them they don't need eight girls around them twer twerking. I was sick of the message when he was talking to me, a 42-year-old you know, businessman, former rapper, podcast nigga. And I'm like, I don't need to hear that shit. Fuck, I'm grown as man, motherfucker. But then I had to think about it, like, he's not talking to me. Nah. So I don't have a problem with it. At first, I thought I did, but upon further review, I don't have an issue. What about you guys? I mean, me personally, I feel that same, you know, what you were saying. I don't really have no dispute over it. I don't know how, you know, it is to be a young black man, you know. So, I mean, it is a lot of young black men out here that do need some guidance. Yeah. You know, that don't have male role models in their lives. It got to start happening. We need some type of change. We need to break this mentality of being selfish, you know. So, and it got to start with black men too. It's like, like I was saying at one time before, you know, like when you have kids and they go off how you accept how you be treated growing up. If you see your mom being abused all the time, you know, you don't like it. Not saying all oh, some might come out and be that way because they thinking that, you know, my mama never left, you know, I knew it hurt her, blah, 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 or my dad, you know, my dad keeps staying after my mom did this, maybe I'm supposed to sit here and deal with it, so it's all about, like, your kids watch you, that's why, you know, with my son, I try not to, or anything, just bring kids around people until you're comfortable, so they don't see too much, because what you show them is how they'll look at certain things and go about yeah. it. You know, you can't, you can't have no, like let's say if you do have your mom and your dad in your house, right, and they're in the union and it's y'all kids and you see your dad, like I was saying, stepping out, whatever. So when he a grown ass man, why should he be looked down on that one? It was acceptable in his household. He's not going to see yeah. anything any different. You know, it's so he writes a very good chance to that. Right. So it's just like, you know, we just gotta get back to the basics of especially with us women too. We need people to step up and show these cause it's kids having kids now. They ain't even had a chance to really live out being a child before they having a baby. Yeah. So, you know, you can't really expect a fifteen year old girl to have a men mentality of a mother and a provider and an educator. Like, all kids are not going to have that mentality. So you have to have someone around that can help them raise their child and guide them in the right direction so their kids can have that way, too. So we all need guidance, man. That's the only way shit going to change. I rock with that, mm -hmm. uh, JB. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I rock with that, too. Um, I also rock with what Obama said and that little um, bit that I heard because... Um, I felt like it was a very, very solid and incisive conversation starter. Um, and for me, um, what I heard was more, uh, it was more about, you know, being financially responsible first. It wasn't necessarily a condemnation of balling out. It was more like a condemnation of balling out early, you know. Um, now, um, because honestly, you know, he only had a few seconds to talk. So he can't talk about how white people spend their money or how rich people spend their money or anything like that. He's got to deal with these traps that these dudes can fall into, you know, when they pick up their first job or their second job. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I dug it for those reasons. And then, too, when you young, like especially me growing up in school, if I would have known the things that I know now, how to spend my money, and how interest work, how credit works, all those. I think I would have been in a better financial position. I wasn't taught how to keep my credit store a good way, 
you know, I pay up most of my bills on time, you know, younger, growing up, college days or whatever. But at the same time, you're like, ah, I ain't worried about it, not knowing it's going to affect mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. trying to purchase something later. Mm-hmm. So I really feel like we really need those type of resources. And I think that's why a lot of us fail because nobody don't te- didn't teach us the game like that, yeah. you know. I agree. I agree. Um, so shout out to Barack, shout out to Steph Curry and everybody else involved in the My Brothers Keeper Initiative. Um, and, and that bomber jacket he had on. The 40 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. 40. <laughs> Looking clean as ever, like mm-hmm. always. So just, uh, uh, and everybody got a problem with it, shut up. He's doing it for a good reason. Right. And we're going to go down the path because oh, you didn't start this oh, journey God. for us. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we, you know, we'll follow him patiently and with um, support until we deem it not necessary anymore. We'll, we'll, and that, that time ain't now. That's my point. Mm-hmm. We'll see how that goes. Um, what else we got? Oh, hair discrimination in New York is now illegal. You can't like tell that. Mitch you can't wear her. Um, Boondocks. I brought, brought this stuff with my hat. Oh, great! <laughs> I brought all with the bad Yo, so You can't discriminate against the hair, which means you can't discriminate against my bed. You know what I'm saying? Not even the thigh tickle. You know what I'm saying? The thigh tickle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. What? I'm just saying. So, uh, oh. no more discrimination, and that's good. I'm very excited about it, especially being a black woman. I, I starting off at jobs, like especially when I started going natural, I actually had them, they didn't tell me I had to change my hair. They was like, oh, so you just let it go like that? Yeah, I let it go like that. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you trying to say? Oh, nothing, because I like it when it was straight. I bet you you did, but I like it this way now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I know how that is. Like, they really judge you off your hair. Yeah, growing up with two sisters, uh, you know, 12 <laughs> female cousins, like, you know, I literally, you know, this was, this was an ongoing Harris part White. of my, ongoing part of my existence growing up, uh, because they were all old enough to have jobs and deal with all that bullshit in the work world, um, you know, I watched them go from having to, you know, rock in the afros and the afro puffs and the cornrows when they were in teenagers and mm-hmm. in college and they're having to switch and start getting perms and shit because they had regular jobs and jobs in management and shit right. you know it's, it, it, it was it was real out there it was real out there um so i'm happy for this i'm real happy for this because yeah. i love natural beautiful hair i love that shit i think it's gorgeous <laughs> no, because you know, I had a lot of I had a lot of men like tell me before, like, you should wear your hair straight, you know, you'll look better like that. I like you better with straight hair. I'm like, okay. But I don't wear my hair for you though. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's just like I I I had discussion with men that don't think natural hair is beautiful to them. It's not beautiful to them. Like I had men flat out say, No, it's not. I hate how it looks. Like it is not cute to me whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, what did we used to say? It was uh, uh, something eight to, eight to eighty, blind, purple, and crazy. <laughs> like, like what? I, beautiful women are beautiful in all of their colors and all of their fabrics and all of their projections, but especially, especially my women, especially black women. <laughs> you know, um, you express that naturally. That's Nothing better than that. Um, I, don't, I don't know the rest of the world. I typically won't we'll go for white women with straight My personal thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, I'm sure we can tell. But I like it. You say even when he go for white women with straight hair. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you remind me of the dude right now. Who was that? Oh, I'm going to get you sucker again. The pro black yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Speak, my brother. Speak, my child. Is that pro white trash? You know what white kids came out? He had a blonde hair, blue eyed wife, and, and the lilyest white kids ever born. His kids look whiter than I did. That's <laughs> that. damn. This kid is whiter as shit. 
I'm gonna get you sucking that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I might watch yeah. that shit tonight. Like, I might just elevate my mind and watch yes. this gold chain yes. war. Yeah. <laughs> that was such a great movie. Yeah. And now that I'm older watching it again, I get all the, the, the bits and pieces I didn't catch on to when I was younger. Oh my yeah. God. Okay, you a couple years younger than us. Uh-huh. That shit came out like, they, that. we got all of that yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was like our <laughs> lives that they were talking about. That's so great, man. Oh. Keenan Ivory Wayans. Keenan Ivory, Keenan Ivory Wayans. The only person to put his entire family on. Mm-hmm. His entire family. And Chris Rock. Let me get one rib. One rib. <laughs> one rib. Yeah, I sure am hungry. He said, pour it in my hand for a dime. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Come from Joe. Fly guy was my nigga. <laughs> Shot him in the toe. When y'all niggas stepping my bunion, I kill you. I kill you. The chicken digger, 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 digger. What? I hate you. You remember that? I didn't get you. Oh my god, yeah. It's a good thing that the players ball with a little midget pistols coming out the head. Oh, you get pimp. Of the year. My god. Niggas had my god. Niggas had like little people in their hat. This shit trying to gun him down. Oh, no. oh yeah! <laughs> this shit was crazy. <laughs> now I want a girl said, and this luscious ass of mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even mine. <laughs> she said, a wig on. She said, on the legs. And my leg. Put it there. You get that check with a few people. Look at her there. She's hopping. She's gonna let me hop in after his ass. That's how you look it. <laughs> No, me. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Just snort this shit. There it go. There it go. There it go. <laughs> we got this. It's her birthday, so she can do yeah. that. <laughs> she can do that. Oh my God. Yo, watch this. Coming the first week, first Friday in March, LeBron James is said to be executive producing it. What? It is supposed to be one of these super great CDs, very introspective. A lot of oomph. It's called Rap or Go to the League. Is this the one with Dre on the project? Or no, that was I, it's rumored. Yes. Okay. That's this is all on that album. It's mm-hmm. all supposed to be on that album. Mm-hmm. So um, you already thought it was gonna be a great CD, and now LeBron has his hands in it. I don't know if that's just for marketing. Part of me thinks it's just for marketing. I don't think LeBron really is happy to produce it. They got commercials going, but LeBron's giving advice like, oh, maybe we should take these two songs off and put them back as a double deluxe later. I, mean, I think is. what it does is it ties, it ties whatever, I think it ties a lot of this material directly to what's gonna be happening in the, in the NBA next season. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Like, think about the all-star games we saw where it was a hip-hop artist out on the court like every five minutes. I think what you what we're seeing is a strategic integration here. I think mm-hmm. we might see it, you know, a song or two on 2K, a song or two over here, a song or two over there. Like, you, mm-hmm. you never know what could happen with this type of team up, especially with Dre on the project. Yeah. We shall see. I'm looking forward to hearing. I think it's March the first. Mm-hmm. So I've always been a big Two Chains fan. So I'm definitely looking forward to um, him with the new project sound. Like he is, he is not disappointing me yet. So we gonna see. We gonna see. Uh, um, break dancing. Uh, well, we'll do this first. Break dancing is is being considered to be added as an Olympic sport. What do you guys think? I think so. That it takes a lot. That shit is not easy. I tried to do a spin on the cardboard box home and broke my damn neck when I was mm. younger. Ain't that that shit ain't easy at all. So 
But I've seen creative like crazy legs and all them over the years. So I'm looking forward to see what what type of uh, people is gonna bring out. You know, style and stuff. Ice skating is a sport too. Japan gonna win every year. Man, don't do that. It's, it's, you can find somebody from the Bronx probably. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> what are we doing, bro? We don't break dance no more. We got to get back into our roots. Oh, nah. Break dancing, break dancing is actually. Overseas. Well, it's, it's huge overseas, overseas, but I know it's also taught at like dance academies. Mm-hmm. Like children are being taught break dancing in formal classes. Break dancing and hip hop dancing styles. Man. I know about hip hop dancing. I know about no, but dancing. no, there's a, there are break dancing classes too, for sure. Right, oh yes, um, and um, I'm interested to see how in depth they're gonna get. If it's gonna be like, oh yeah, you guys just go break. You know, are they gonna get into like the different styles and mm-hmm. categories? You know what I'm saying? Like, are they gonna break it down like that? They like to. the spins, the you know, the back spin, windmill. Um, the new the mayor, you know, that move, that you know, mm. um, you know, they gotta bring it all down. That's gonna be really, really interesting to see. Cause oh, that, you trying to challenge me? No, I can barely do a cartwheel now. I'm not gonna do anything. You, 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 you want some of this? Uh, don't. Do, 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 oh. do. Oh, see, that's, <laughs> that's how you know an old motherfucker is because when you talk about break dances, they hop up and start doing the robot and shit. That's how that's you know an old motherfucker. Oh, really? Oh, really? They start. Because that's all I can do is like is lock the shoulders and shit. So, oh, really, nigga? You don't want to lock hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Keep checking, keep checking. We got another. Yeah, we're ready. Yeah, I gave it a little shake before I let it go. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, so, yeah, Brick Nash is coming to Olympic, the- Olympic Theater, uh, to an Olympic near you. Hopefully, there's a remaining one, so we'll see. Um, before we get out of here, Umbrella Academy. Um, we watched it, except for me. No, I haven't seen it yet. Um, superhero type TV, reminiscent of the. Uh, X Men and Professor Xavier's house. I call. It, I say it's a little darker. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I enjoyed season one. I thoroughly enjoyed season one. It's about uh, seven. No, it's ten episodes. No, it's, uh, kids. Oh yeah, seven kids. Um, seven kids. I think there were originally ninety nine children who were born on this certain day. This certain Forty-three time. Forty children who were born. Yes, you, you know that shit. Forty three children are born the same day, same time, mm-hmm. and they all were born some kind of power. And a rich billionaire pretty much bought seven of them mm-hmm. and raised them as his own, raised them to be superheroes, X Men, Avenger types. And uh, I'll say that he passes away, and they've all gone their separate ways, <coughs> and they have come back to kind of figure out what the next steps are. And that's when you see the action. And um, I enjoyed it. I recommend it. I said, watch it. Okay. Yeah, it was dope. Um, you know, a lot of, I mean, it had the drama element in there too because they talk about you know the way these kids grew up and yeah. dealing with being orphans and all of that kind of stuff. So you know, it was what you would call like an action drama. But mm-hmm. I dug it as well. You know, ten hour long episodes. So it took me a few days. To get through it, but at the same time, it was well worth the time, you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, looking forward to season two because season one ended and had you like. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how season. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty confident there'll be a season two. Yeah, it's got to be based on the way it ended. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's the show. <laughs> and. Uh, anything else you want to add before we get up out of here? We know it's Mick's birthday. She turned 55. Oh. Double nipple. Happy birthday, Mick. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, no. <laughs> My crippled no, no. I will be walking in about six weeks. Keep that in mind. Um, so invite me out. I'll come. Um, if you, let's see, if you're still listening, you've been through the entire show. 
Don't forget, there's a Kickback TV musical playlist mm -hmm. available on Spotify mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Apple, Apple Music. Mm -hmm. It's called Kickback TV. Here's the creative part. Playlist. You see what I'm saying? If I hadn't told them, they wouldn't know. I like it. I like it. We got all the latest it's music. Got a special feel to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's updated every Friday with new music. Okay. So you listen to it, you download it every Friday, you'll get the new music as is. So if you're not too hip as to what's popping in these streets, because um, it'll give you what's hot, and then it'll give you some underground shit too. So you'll get both. So every week you can kind of get into both worlds. So my poppy guys that's only, only knows what's on the radio, it'll be your favorites. And my underground niggas who only know that, that'll be there too. And you guys can kind of cross over. Mm -hmm. okay. And, um... The Oscars are on tonight. I just hope Black Panther win or something. I don't really give a f like. I don't hope I take that back because fuck these white war shows. But yeah. I would win. enjoy it. That'll be pure hate. That'll be pure hate if they don't. So, but that's who I want to be surprised either. I hate saying it after everything. Yeah, and then they're fucking around to give them like best wardrobe. Yeah. Yeah. All like, the, yeah. Some dumbass shit like that. Not dumbass shit because you know, of course, there's a lot of effort put into it and everything. But they'll it'll fuck around with something like that. And you just be like, okay, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Not best picture, not best action, not best supporter, not best nothing. Just the best sound or some shit. I mean, that doesn't really been no good action movies that came out last year. Man, Black Panther. Oh, well, well, the um, Marvel. That yeah, one Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, I was, yeah, Marvel. Yeah, Black Panther kicked everything. Guys. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah. Especially me. So um, thank y'all for tuning in. Um, any last words? Nah, just thank y'all for tuning in. Listen to us on topic, off topic, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's listen to me laugh and snort. That shit is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, there she go. The it first of all, nah, you oh. deep throat it there. I ain't. Oh, oh, pause. pause. <laughs> it's like you took all that air pause. in the back of pause. your throat to do that. Pause. That wasn't even a snort. Pause. Take it easy. Take, take it easy. easy. A lot of anyway, <clears throat> yeah, these motherfuckers will go all night. Happy birthday, me. Happy birthday, baby. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. God bless you. Bye, y'all. Uno, oh, we out. You gonna hop over there and turn it off? Yeah. Oh, you trust JB would turn it off this time? No. Don't try to use me for leverage. Okay, come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. Nah, cause you do an unexpected. You almost dislocated my shoulder. Hold the fuck, almost. So I have my ass in a damn sling. Fucking with you. Now we're gonna be two crippled niggas over here. <laughs>